provide motivation and then track contributions and make all this kind of like, you know, end to end type of uh, system that makes everybody happy. And then we need to balance like the short term gains of let the people need to get dopamine hit like right here, right now. Uh, plus they need to get something in the end. And also the goal is to have long lasting effect of, you know, what we do here. So it's fascinating. Yeah. Yes, and also it is a, uh, it's important for uh, tra tracking is important for funding as well, because I don't know how it works in the States, but here, and I believe in most uh, European countries, it's the actual people that get funded, not the, the organization that uh, hosts the project or proposes. Yeah, so for this fast grants, there is actually, I think, an option. You can either do institution or a person, but obviously we're, we need to do a person because institution will, will make it like crazy bureaucratic. Uh, here, when they when you are submitting as an institution, it's strictly for universities. It's not like I can go and uh, apply for a grant. If I, I can apply, but they will say me who is involved and what what everybody has to present as a CV or a resume or whatever. And it's strictly personal. Yeah. Now the question is like, who do we even put on a team? Like. And in what capacity, because we need to present an actual team and get commitments of all these people. And yeah, and, and then like what happens if they jump out of this commitment? Like, it's tricky. It's tricky. And what's, uh, what's the duration of this project? And uh, Yeah, I put, um, I talked with um, Tayab and this... Um, what's his name, Janos, um, mm -hmm. the guy from Canada. And they both agreed that four months is a good um, mm -hmm. kind of target to hit because they typically would expect six months, but we can undercut that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, four months, it's, it's no joke. Like you have to be committed for something for, for four months. Yeah, of course. So very, very good document <laughs> going to be created. I think we can reuse it for different other applications, but this one is, is exciting because it comes from the actual industry and tech people. And mm -hmm. that, that should ideally simplify it. I'm curious to see what other projects they funded before and how they reported uh, the progress because, you know, it somewhat has to be public in a way. Yes, maybe. maybe it's interesting. Other thing that's common is that they usually refer to the technological maturity level or some other acronym that they use, the TMP, TPM, I'm not sure. I can look it up, which means that uh, you can be involved with projects that do not reach uh, becoming end products. Mm. It's very common, so maybe we should do describe where we stand regarding that it's not an end to end uh, we will start from nothing and we will reach a, a consumer product for example or but some uh, some funds uh, prefer uh, only giving money to the latest stage when you will get something that's already existing and you will uh, create the the final product but others more oriented to, to research, they go to, they find the initial stages where the results are uh, very vague and uh, you cannot uh, guarantee anything. So yeah. it shows something, the, the profile of the, of the fund. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. asked the, the guys from the Indra team, Harvard, if they would be willing to support and I think they are, and they're just worried that Harvard would make it super complex. And so on. Well, Harvard will take a, a cut of everything. Yeah, but the nature, okay. the nature, I think, and again, I have no clue how all of this works, but it seems as this fast grants applications can go to individuals, and that's what we should be shooting for. 
So technically, like, I think Ben, the, the Harvard uh, researcher, is not used to this because this is not how mm -hmm. it's typically done in the industry. Uh, but since we already have the Canadian guy, I think the only thing we need from Indra team is just their backing, kind of like we're mm -hmm. in to support it, and that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going for the individual uh, funding is a better idea at this stage because otherwise you need to go, you need to team up with a university, go as a consortium or some kind of a joint uh, venture. And the universities have, have a lot of uh, rules on how to choose uh, partners. If they have to get uh, quotations from others as well and compare, I think it's a bit difficult for us to go there. Yeah, I agree to an extent. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the Golden Journal. And okay. the ideas that you, Yasun, had with Max, uh, maybe you can give us a little bit more uh, flavor to it. I read the things that you've outlined, the credit for, for the credit and, and, and recursive nature of, of this thing. Uh, very interesting. Yes, uh, I mainly see to, I looked a bit uh, about such algorithms that are based on praise and uh, peer voting or uh, any other similar, uh, similar mechanics. I see the main problem first being that you, you should have some incentive to, to bother doing it. So if I'm to give credit to someone, uh, there has to be something there that I have to, to gain, let's say. But okay, this can, this can be easily solved. The, the difficult part is how to, to avoid the opposite, how to, to get uh, proper, uh, a proper algorithm so that uh, it's not the best. The, you, you avoid having everyone vote, for, vote or praise everyone. Mm -hmm. Because that's uh, that's a very common issue. I found an example about a photography-related site that mm -hmm. I will look it up and I will uh, tell you which one it is. That has a vote, has a competition, and uh, they even have bots that vote for everyone. So that's because <laughs> that's the best, the best strategy. Because your uh, submissions get more exposed as you vote for others. So. No matter what you do, it's the best thing is to vote uh, for everyone else. We because they kind of like they vote back, they kind of like vote back because vote for vote type of schemes or something. No, because they, in order to give you an incentive to vote mm -hmm. and don't just submit and uh, don't look into others, uh, they say that they will show your submission to, to others for voting. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbers your uh, photograph will be displayed is uh, proportional to, to the votes that you have given. Ah, okay. So it's gone completely wrong and everyone is, uh, is voting for everyone. Yeah. There is so, like a dedicated like field of research of like the voting schemes. Yeah. Right, they have to set them up. So there's a reason for that. Yeah, of course. The other thing that we, we discussed is that uh, you cannot uh, start uh, evaluating or praising or whatever people just for their uh, total contribution to the project or Corona Y or whatever. You have to tie it to specific, uh, to, to something Nature. specific. Yeah. That, that's the most important uh, and I, th I think, I think the, that exercise that we started with the um, Yitma journal is the, the best kind of the, uh, what's it called? Like, basically, it's a microcosm of Corona Y and the best mm -hmm. um, method to outline the, the, the whole thing. So what, what me and Max were working on, we, uh, Max actually put all the messages from Slack in, into this uh, sheet. 
And obviously, you know, it's kind of messy because some things are like text, some things like video and things like that. And I actually did the unique uh, on the agents and it's 10 mm -hmm. people out of the 15 in the channel, which is interesting. And uh, oh, I mine, think... mine is the last, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wrapped it up <laughs> very nicely. <laughs> and um, what I did, I, um, I actually started outlining the agents, their intents and reasons. Um, so, you know, just keeping it very simple, like telling someone about the opportunity, like why, what is the reason? Increasing probability of the outcome happening, increasing the quality of the outcome, reducing the workload for themselves, mm -hmm. basically a mix of kind of selfish and non-selfish reasons, because I mean, we're, we're selfish people, selfish beings, you know, everything that we do has the attachment to ourselves, but obviously there is impact, there is the collabor collaborative goals and things like that. But yeah, I think the best way is to tie that into specific projects because that way you can pack as much as possible and have some constraints to it. Because if you try to map it out in Corona Y in general, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be that would be difficult. But even this that you are doing is I can see it getting very complicated uh, very quickly. You have uh, five rows there and it's already... I don't know how it can be expanded to the whole uh, project without a lot of uh, human, human labor. Yeah. Maybe, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, you can do it with... Uh, you can automate. So well, that's a great, you know, scientific study to come. But uh, I mean, we ha the beauty of it is everything is digital, right? So essentially, I mean, there's got to be some patterns, there's got to be some, you know, things that can be automated to some extent, even mm -hmm. in terms of the basic things like the, you know, uh, I don't know, facilitation, like scheduling, there are so many of these things that I've done manually that uh, like if I haven't done those, the outcome would be so different. But since mm -hmm. I was there and I mean, the question is, could it be done by some form of a mix of me and uh, suggestions to me? Like, hey, there was nothing happening in Gitma channel for two days. You should probably ping everyone and ask what's the update or, or things like that. Just support it, decision, decision making support systems or something like that but because then like the the actual contribution is not just mine it's actually systems contribution in a way right yeah okay <laughs> you see what i mean yeah. i'm not simplifying i don't things. know <laughs> yes <laughs> it still seems like a very very long way to to reach that, that point that we can uh, even make suggestions to for things like that. But what we can do is, uh, and that's another thing we discussed with Max as well, is that uh, we can offer the infrastructure to for someone to prove what, uh, what he's saying, but uh, not make the, the actual claim. What I mean is that uh, I may come out and say, okay, this is the literature review tool and this is 90% uh, my work. The others did nothing or whatever. So I, I won't say that because it's evident that it's not, that's not the truth because uh, the data is there and there can be a system to, to, to support uh, to support such claims if they're true or not so but you cannot uh, actually make the make the claims on behalf of the of the people someone has to at least list the list the contributors i think or uh, 
make some initial uh, some initial evaluation that these five people are the top contributors for this project and uh, here is the the infrastructure that uh, allows uh, verification of that I don't know if it's making sense as I'm saying it well Maybe the verification I'm, I think the only way to verify the contribution is just like whether it's present in digital form, because if it's mm -hmm. not, then you cannot verify it. Like if I say that, Hey, I actually had a secretive talk with Anton, it wasn't recorded, but we actually came up with the whole Gitmo workshop structure and we just told everyone to, to follow it. I mean, that, that could have, or that could or could have not happened. The only way to verify it is whether there is a recording for that. Yes, but we are not trying to to identify people that are trying to cheat the system. We are trying to to give more data. That, so that's just an I example will, of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I also gave a negative example, but the positive example would be I contributed to this project. This is my contribution. You can. Uh, you can I want to it put up. it on LinkedIn. That that's yeah. basically the ultimate. Yeah. Okay, exactly. builder. I want to to brag about it because I indeed uh, contributed, and this is what I did. But the system cannot uh, quantify it automatically and say it's thirty percent uh, or fifty percent or whatever. It can it can just give the. The, the actual data. So you go from the from the top level that I was there, I had some involvement with the project. You skip the aggregation step that quantifies my contribution, and you go to the detail, to the full uh, granularity. Yeah. That these are the things uh, I said, I did, or uh, the code. I agree. I... Just you know, and and maybe aggregation is a byproduct of these highlights or something kind of like there are these are the core things that i did and by the way you know i sent i don't know 200 messages in git my channel and i i put 200 thumbs up on messages or or something like that yeah maybe that's uh, or even if if a tool is there that uh, one can go and drill down to the specific, uh, see the specific messages or the specific lines of code. If one is interested, if yeah. I am to evaluate a developer, for example, and I get a... Kind of like zoom in, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's what I did, the Step. highlight, hmm. zoom in, and here's zoom in into the Let's actual see. details. A graph, again, we, we're back to knowledge graphs. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a graph. It's a navigation through a very complex uh, graph because what, I, what I'm saying as an example is, let, let's say I try to hire a developer for a software project and I get a, a GitHub account. I contributed to this open source project to 10 million lines, whatever. I will click some of them and see what's the... I will do some investigation. But if it's about code, it's easy because you consider that what's in uh, someone's uh, repository is written, it's his own product and uh, you can actually evaluate. But on such uh, projects where Slack is involved and uh, ideation phase and uh, design and whatever, it's more difficult. So you need a higher level tool, maybe some better, yeah. uh, some better experience. Oh, Max and is, the, is joining. Okay. <clears throat> and the praise, uh, the thumbs up or whatever, because that's the thing that can be quantified. The, the reactions to messages, the mentions, this can be used as indicators as to where to direct the, the drill down, the zooming in, as you, as you said. Yeah. Hey, Max, we were just talking about the kind of the, let's, let's imagine this something that outlines the, the Gitmo workshop um, contributions. And you can see that, hey, Yasun, you know, contributed here, kind of like a highlight. 
but then you can click zoom in and you zoom in into the actual graph of all the things that he did, like 100 messages here, 100 some thumbs up here, you know, uh, spoke for 20 minutes on, on Zoom calls and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, but I, as I, as I uh, proposed earlier, I, th I think if we could classify uh, those inputs uh, as uh, steering, steering inputs versus um, purely execution inputs, um, this would really... By steering, this, you mean this, that the, the input causes someone to do something? Yes. So, yeah. like, we, we can measure the, that this particular message um, caused uh, the development effort to go into specific directions. So, like, yeah, like certain, the causal certain, stuff is going to be very certain tough. tasks. Like certain tasks, certain tasks were created as a result. Um, so this, how we can, uh, because if tasks are not created, then it, yeah, it's impossible to classify this, this inputs. So, and just in general, the approach should be, uh, we, we, we don't have to deal with just the messy cloud of uh, messages and like reactions and whatever. We can design the system so that uh, people, so that inputs are will be in the format or will will trigger certain like for example uh trailer tasks or something that will give us what we want okay so so we can introduce this framework like hey guys let's um for example if if, if we discuss something let's make sure it will um result in 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 the trailer tasks for example and everyone will agree on on such rule right and this will make a discussion much more productive and will be it will be so much easier to track and classify those inputs as a result yeah i'm just worried about us even attempting to do any causal uh, you know inference i mean it it's going to be insane like imagine that's my that's my point so we we can introduce this f workflow that would give us exactly what we want like we don't have to deal with uh with them just some mess we can uh say hey guys let's discuss things on slack and then uh execute things on trello okay and people will just will do just that oh or... you mean like there was a discussion and then as a result there were tasks created yeah yeah okay so or that's more say... like a kind of like a procedure yeah to 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 work with but that, yeah. that doesn't mean that we can retroactively apply this no procedure. no that's that that's my that's my point why try to deal with this mess retroactively let's do it proactively let's yeah, make sure that there will be some things that will never go into trello like for example <laughs> i mean like even look at yeah. literature review channel right now um, there is Trello, right? Bianca created mm -hmm. it, but majority of stuff just happens in conversations and calls. Yeah, but if it does not lead to Trello tasks, then it's just, uh, it's just uh, I don't know, like, um, then we don't have to classify those inputs or weigh those inputs uh, because, like, we can just talk, we just, just talk about the weather and about politics no, or whatever. But like you know what I mean? Just noise. As, as, I, as I gave the example before, I think that we can skip the, we, we don't need to identify the, the causal relations automatically because if we have the, the system that offers uh, supporting evidence, and I'm saying it in the good sense, I'm not talking about conflicts that we have to resolve in favor of one or the other, but just, just the data, the fully drilled down data and a good way to navigate that then if someone wants to see what's uh, what's my contribution to to a project yeah this is what go we discussed and look into with, that without uh, yeah, so this is what we discussed with you yasan uh, mm -hmm. that 
uh, if if we introduce this rule that the burden of proof is on uh, the one who um, wants to make sure his contribution is valued, so that means we get, we we just give this uh, full uh, transparency and full uh, like you can find all your messages, you can find all the conversations, and you can claim uh, that your input is worth something, and then. Other people, if they want to uh, kind of argue that they disagree or something, then they might, you know, like go through this evidence that you uh, that you provided, uh, that the system provided, and argue that no, we don't think that this this particular input was like critical or something. But I think in most cases, people will not really question like your. Um, so, in, so instead of awarding people, instead of the, the, if like we take this burden on ourselves, on, on the system, that system should reward people's input, we should instead do that people sh can take uh, as much credit as much credit as they want, and they may dig all this evidence to support their claim, uh, but the burden is on them. We don't award anybody, but people can award themselves if they if they choose to do so. And other themselves people or, might, or might, others, not only themselves, but or, the, or maybe others. The initi yes, the initiative maybe. comes from uh, from the people, not from the from the system. Yeah, then people will just deal with this mass of data uh, to support their their claim. But this would be their, I mean, their work. Okay. Uh, if we want to automate the award function, like if we want to reward people's contribution automatically, then we should design the uh, design the system from from the start so that mm -hmm. people provide their inputs in the certain in the certain format in a certain framework. And that's the same uh, this explainable AI, the same problem with explainable AI. Like you've got a design system from the start to be explainable. You cannot do this retroactively. It's impossible to solve retroactively. Yeah. So yeah, so we so what we can do is just re record everything and let people use this 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 track track records, so to speak, to support their claims that hey uh, my input is worth something. If we want to reward people's contribution and if you want to automate this then we should design the whole workflow to be explainable or trackable okay uh, then people cannot just do this uh randomly like talking to each other via yeah, random th channels this, this means enforcing certain procedures and this is yeah. not how the world works no but people may choose to like hey i i think this framework w is much more reliable and much more rewarding. Okay, so they might just choose our um, methodology how to run this uh, uh, like co collaboration uh, work. So, it, so yeah, so people do it differently because we don't offer them anything. We don't offer any alternative. But if we do offer, then maybe they will choose this uh, collaborate collaborative environment that will track. Uh, I think that uh, I think mm -hmm. that even if you don't uh, enforce a specific uh, pattern, just being uh, on the role of a coordinator of a team or a team leader or whatever we call it, and I, someone wants to give credit to to others and uses the system just to oh yeah oh yeah to split up the work, it will be yeah but. The in practice, uh, and not enforced, yeah, but then, it will be adopted. But then again, it, 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 it's got to be someone to use the system to um, reward someone else's contribution. So it cannot be done by the system. That's, that's the problem. If you want it to be done by the system, then the system should be created, like, trackable from the start. Uh, I and think people that, should I think play that, by uh, the rules. It's two separate things, two, two yeah, separate yeah, I, uh, steps. You start with uh, rewarding people on someone's initiative. Yeah. Because you cannot do it automatically at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, practices that uh, allow automatic uh, yes. acknowledgement exactly. or uh, something will exactly. be 
will emerge to use a yeah, your favorite can, word <laughs> see, yeah right or we can just design design because like the case like i said like the case with explainable ai it's got to be build explainable it, it, you can we cannot solve it retroactively yeah okay well no, but this you, makes you sense. can put humans doing the work at first and then uh, mm -hmm. It will lead into practices that uh, minimize the human uh, mm -hmm. human effort required. Yep. It's a, it's the same thing as uh, as using Trello for for project management. You you assign someone to manage a project, and uh, they tend to use the tool because it makes their work easier, not because you yeah. enforce the tool. Uh, the tool yes, is there that's, and, uh, that's exactly yeah so like why not if it solves your day-to-day -day, um, so and this creates opportunity to introduce something interesting uh, like we can design it based on uh, existing tools uh, because it's all about methodology right uh, and then we can package it into our own uh, collaborative environment um, I think a good example is uh, the spreadsheet uh, Arthur showed uh, before about the Gitma workshop. Because if we, if we put some effort to construct that, it will, be, it will be evident what can be done on the next project to make this, uh, this easier, this task easier. Yeah, right, right. But but again, if at, at we... first we will do it manually, and we will we will reach a point where this uh, Gitma Gitma workshop journal is uh, satisfactory. The yeah, next time but... we do it, we will have this in mind and say, in order to facilitate uh, this. Right, right. But but again, it this spreadsheet uh, which contains every every data that's available. Uh, can only be used by the person who wants to reward somebody or reward himself. Uh, mm -hmm. Like what, like the goal should be, how do we encourage people to contribute? That's the ultimate goal. And, and for them, they can always, if they have some bright idea, they always have a choice to uh, share it with the group or not share it with the group, but maybe go and just, develop it themselves right mm -hmm. uh and it's high it's a highly competitive market in terms of all this software and technology startups so sometimes uh, the idea is actually worth something and and you need to uh, you know ensure like your first mover advantage or something uh so how do we encourage people to to be confident that their investment when they share this idea and not just share it and and go and walk away but uh, really press to develop this stuff. How how to encourage them and make and make them feel confident that their investment will not be in vain. They will keep it. Uh, if they can always point to this, like, hey, that was guys, like that was actually my idea all, all, all the way, and I pushed and I, and I kind of wanted to collaborate with you to to develop it further and. Uh, so there is always the sense that their idea or their effort will not be just socialized um, and will not be just, um, and then they, they will be much more willing to discuss and share their bright ideas, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but for this, you don't need the rewards in the system. You just need the tracking. Yes, but right. Of course, the reward is to realize this idea. So that's the reward. Yeah. Uh, why, why would you share it with the group? Because you want to actually build this technology or product or something, and you don't have resources. You don't have money to hire uh, developers to do it for you. So you come to this open source community and think, hey, maybe I can collaborate with somebody. Um, so yeah, so this, in my view, this is the problem we want to solve, to encourage people to share their insights, their ideas, and, and be always confident that no one will take them, 
and take these ideas and just run, run away. Yes, a very simplified version of that is people uh, mailing uh, to themselves. <laughs> they used to do it in the old days. They r write something and send it by post office to their own address to have us yeah. proof that... <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. I, I didn't know that. Like, that. That's a thing, yeah. Wow. <laughs> So that they they might uh, might might argue their case in 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 court or some mm -hmm. court of the yes, law. Yes. Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will be That's... fascinating if we create a new system of kind of uh, IP uh, uh, type of um, recognition and mm -hmm. because I mean patents are so outdated as uh, as a method and just this fluid idea to execution something i think is is just an absolute necessity the the patent system is mostly designed around protection not acknowledgement it's not that uh, when you file a patent you want uh, to be recognized as the creator of something you mostly want to avoid the competitors uh, working on that so it's Right. It's not but, true, but, but what but, we are trying to do is the opposite: is uh, create but the, something similar to patents, but for uh, collaboration and. Uh, yes, because you cannot really uh, launch your patent to market. Okay, yes. that's the like. Okay. Yeah, you might have it, and it's like you're protected, but it does not do any good for you or anybody else in the world because the patent cannot go to market and. Uh, so you need to develop the develop a product around this technology, that, mm -hmm. and this is where you need collaboration. Uh, and um, this is where you, I mean, do the speech deck and go and try to raise funds. But even to raise funds without team, it would be like even if you have the patent, like no, you won't yeah, be able exactly. to do that. Okay. So if we create this launchpad, like the uh, Arthur's. Uh, analogy like you may really launch your ideas into commercial space uh, and you may f you may find you may find your your team in this like a thousand plus uh, people group and people who are uh, many of them are quite uh, idealistic too okay and I, and I, and I understand I mean I can kind of share uh, Arthur's perspective in terms of the startup world, the venture capital world is just eat like dog eat dog kind of environment. So no one is really idealistic. People will do whatever for, for the profit. Uh, so how do you find those collaborators or, or your team in the commercial startup venture world? Um, and so, so you 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 may feel much more kind of safe to try to develop your product in in like Corona Y kind of community, uh, especially if there is this underlying uh, uh, frame, like uh, infrastructure that tracks all the inputs anyway. Um, yes, that's. On that, what you are saying, uh, a, a next level problem will uh, occur because you need the uh, acknowledgement within the community and uh, on whatever claims you do, but you also need uh, protection from external uh, from external entities <laughs> at some point. Yeah. So yeah, you cannot go full fully transparent and say I publish everything uh, and uh, it's out there because you are in danger from. That's why I was always a, like proponent of like let's do private groups and private developments, and then everyone is everyone feels much more uh, confident to share and collaborate. Assuming that this or global in, contribution system has access to everything. Yeah, yeah, because like if you have this five people group uh, and you have this system that tracks everything, all your communications, then even if what someone from that group, from, from those five people, 
exposes everything to some external actors, you don't care because you, if you, if you will litigate, I mean, you will have much better uh, position in the court. Uh, but if it's not a private group of five people, but it's like an open group of a thousand people, then you just practically won't be able to argue your case. Uh, it's considered in public in any case, but yeah Maybe. yeah so, th so that's why i was like no guys let develop stuff in the private groups but how do you form the group in the first place like how do you find those people i think corona coronavirus community is much more it's it's a it's a selection of more idealistic uh people uh, mostly uh so we want people to form work groups and develop things and maybe even launch them into commercial space. Yes, and uh, that's one uh, other point for the for, for the contribution tracking because it it is an open community and uh, a thousand members can be there. But uh, for a specific project that maybe I want to start, I want to find the best among the one thousand, uh, mm -hmm. the, the more suitable, let's say. So you need some kind of uh, documentation and tracking and uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say ranking because its project is different so you cannot rank uh, rank people but I can uh, I need something that allows me to find the most suitable uh, team members for a new project and this is the motivation uh -huh. this is mm -hmm. the motivation behind having everything well structured and uh, logged that i can discover people and other people can discover me because we will do something good together and it's uh, yeah i i, I totally like i totally like this discover people because like this discovery engine okay i mean it's still in the at the level of like let's provide people with papers and connection so so that they can make connections uh between papers okay effectively but but uh, i was always like no let's like ideally or ultimately we want people to discover other people and make connections with other people who wrote those papers or authored them or they have this expertise yeah. um so that this is the engine when people find or discover other people and they establish this collaborative connection. And I think the best example that I know is of course, um, um, Kahneman and Tversky uh, story that uh, Michael Lewis uh, told in his, um, the undoing project, okay? So this is how you can develop just breakthrough ideas and technologies. By the way, amazing book that Max recommended to me like two years ago, and I, I re I'm really glad I, I read through it. Yeah, so this is the engine when this Tversky guy finds this Kahneman guy, and they spend five hours a day in the in the in, in the shared office. Okay, this is For the years. discovery engine. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, and they totally turned upside down the whole field. Not just some, didn't just find some, uh, no, they, they totally turned the whole field upside down, uh, which is like crucial field for so many other uh, industries. And, and I mean, it's a, it's a psychology, it's a model of how humans think, right? Uh, so I would say it's probably the most important discovery that they made. And the engine of this discovery was just them finding each other and fighting each other in the office all day long for many years. Yeah, I think the fighting part is actually the most valuable thing. <laughs> the, the differences and the contradictions between their backgrounds is what made that, and the ability to still work together is what made uh -huh. that uh, collaboration so effective. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, we want people, yeah, maybe they will uh, work with papers and, and try to make sense of all the connections uh, just linguistically and logically between published uh, papers. But, but we want, I think we, need, we want to create this 
some someone said it's it's like a social network. Um, no, I I think it's more like collaborative network. It's um, a, it's a routing problem all over that we discussed uh, at Gitma as well with Tyler. How to uh, make proper proper connections between people, but mm-hmm. instead of of making making them fa- facilitating them as a human, fa- facilitating them as a somehow automatically as a discovery engine or being uh, mm-hmm. give them the tools to to find each other like yeah like hey you should definitely talk to this guy right <laughs> so something like that um yeah i think great stuff uh i mean let's let's summarize it to some practicality <laughs> so oh, yeah oh yeah um what, what's our next step um, how about we take the, the Gitma sheet and attempt to, um, to do what, like uh, we talked through so much stuff, but I'm, I'm kind of failing to, to converge into the next step. Uh, besides this idea of kind of creating a zoom in, like kind of maybe creating a high level out of the Gitma, just, you know, here's what Yason did. Here's what Arthur did. What, here's what Anton did. Here's what Max did and all the interactions and then imagining that there is the zoom in option and what could be within that zoom in option yeah but the purpose like uh, who is the like tell me like give me the user use case or like user story uh well the the use case is to put something up on the website in a week or or something like that no i mean yeah but to put from the, whose perspective like like I'm a researcher, I, I want to establish what? Like you want may... to you want to do a background check on me. I come to you and say I worked on the Gitma project and I want to did work something. with you now yeah. and you want to, to check me out to see what I what I did exactly. Well Tyler needs a job and he go through the interview and he says, Actually I was participating in on the academic conference and here's what we did. And that's that's perfect case okay yeah, so, so that's that's very good imagine uh, exactly. instead of yeah imagine instead of putting uh, participated in this workshop having a link that uh, allows a drill down or a very good presentation of because what what they wanted what they want to see on your resume not just the place that you worked right not just the project that you worked but like but what did you do okay so he needs to describe his contribution and mm-hmm. we okay. want to provide him like hey this is how your contribution looks like and you can just take it and show to your uh to hr people uh so yeah so that's that's a great use case uh will be amazing if we will help him find a job as a result yeah that would be <laughs> Yeah, that would be the best uh, well, way I guess to... it's it, what we're describing essentially what happens with any like software open source project, right? People mm-hmm. could just simply claim, okay, I contributed to this machine learning library. And when people hire somebody like this with that claim, if they know what they're doing, they will go into GitHub project mm-hmm. of, of that ML library, right? And they just simply look, what is that contribution? Is it just like grammar in readme file or, you know, it's actually the whole function was built or what contribution was that, right? And so on. So I guess our goal now is obviously for software, it's already done deal. Like we, we almost have the similar thing in place. Unfortunately, you know, w- majority of our members use like collab notebooks. So we don't have actually this, that great traceability, but it, I mean, it, at this point, eventually will people see that, oh, wait a second. If I want to claim like this and that, then it will be much better for me just to use GitHub, you know, straightforward. And for example, uh, the, I, I think Isaac's teams, they're already using specific like add-ons to GitHub to track Python notebooks better and so on. So we definitely have, you know, moving in that direction. Now what we need to focus on is essentially the same type of system that is tracking like Slack channel and our conversation. So probably mm-hmm. we definitely need to have this pipeline of every call gets recorded, published on YouTube, then it's cut like ML annotated. And now it kind of transforms into like 
additional like Slack to the Slack channel where we just have text. We have in addition to it, we have a good track of like conversation. Okay. And then we have, and now we just have the same problem. Okay, we have a, a, a chat list of messages, right? And we want to kind of get the, like filter out the nuggets of, of actual contributions, kind of commits, right? Git commits, Slack Git mm -hmm. commits. And then we just create that log and that's it. Then the, it's on the shoulders of actual like people to claim, you know what? Yeah. Here is like my contribution. Let me actually figure out what I actually contributed. And if if you yeah. have the tool that filters out the game, oh, imposter I'm... syndrome. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then I'm like filtering out, like, oh, wait a second. I was actually the guy early on that like proposed that thing. Oh, it was mm -hmm. actually my idea, you know, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like this. So I guess our like we need to separate this goal of us as a top to bottom kind of like, oh, we're Oracle that observe everything. No, no, no. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I like this uh, Max proposal is just like, we, we, we shouldn't be never in that position. We just simply need to make sure that traceability is there. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference between like, again, the patent bureau, as Yasun pointed out, like it's not about kind of tracking of, of that. It just for people to protect what they did, right? And in a sense, we're doing sim in similar fashion. It's kind of like, okay, we need to make sure that there is like this trace for people to claim what they mm -hmm. wanted to claim. And mm -hmm. if they don't want to claim anything, like, okay, why do we bother? Yeah, right. Right? So we just need yeah. to create an environment that exactly, anti-imposter syndrome, that people like, but how can I know? Because nobody wants to go and kind of like, oh, guys, I, I actually... Uh, propose that git workshop or something right this is what people will be shy about and different personalities mm -hmm. will right mm -hmm. but, but if there is simply there is a log and very easy tools of kind of for for people like to filter out themselves at least just look mm -hmm. for their contribution and maybe later on we will have some tags you know or potentially valuable nugget mm -hmm. because it was mentioned later on then people will kind of say, oh, wait a second. You know, exactly this anti imposter syndrome type of thing. I really cool. like that type of... Uh, yeah, so why don't we, in, in practical terms, why don't we task Taylor? Uh, Tyler? Like, Tyler. Tyler. Why, mm -hmm. why don't we task Tyler to Tyler uh, to um, actually do that for his resume? And, and we will kind of learn how he does it and how he uses mm -hmm. what, what we collected already. Let's try uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also my, my, that's the most my, my, difficult my, part of a resume. My when, only, when my only resume. extra, my only extra requirement would be like, could you please uh, uh, separate your um, like steering inputs, okay, where you feel like you you change the mm -hmm. direction of the conversation, or uh, because this is like this is a super valuable thing, okay, from purely executive like you just you were you were just a handyman who who helped to organize this meeting or helped here or helped there so let's mm -hmm. so i would i want to see i don't know i i wouldn't do that i i'm pretty sure that will fail but we can try mm -hmm. well i mean no. like, I, I i could tell you why it i mean like what would be the usage of this if if we have the list of, again, so uh, Tyler could be actually the perfect example because he had lots of messages, right? Mm -hmm. And if he can kind of like go and put labels on it, we have, uh, you know, like we have labeled data. So we can just yeah. supervise the classifier of some sort really quickly just for testing purposes. So, so if yeah. we position it like this, maybe, I mean, like, because I, I kind of sense what Arthur, you're trying to say, right? It's kind of like, oh, it could trigger the person kind of like, oh, to start thinking about like, uh, you know, like that joke of, uh, of, of man coming to doctor complaining his like headaches. The doctor asked like, what do you do for a living? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorting apples on a, on, a, on, on a farm. So what's that? Like, oh, I'm making decisions every day. You know, here is like a small apple in one direction then the big one in the other one and so on. So. We definitely shouldn't do that, or at least like, like. What's put... the joke? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, we we can we can actually we I can mean, actually have in <laughs> Russian it sounds good. It's just in English. It's yeah, <laughs> but we can we can actually have more 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 categories. Like how 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 do we categorize? Like if I if I write down my resume yeah. and say this is what mm -hmm. I did for the project, maybe I can 
put some la mar like more labels on my on, on every <coughs> like input text, that I make. you know even if <clears throat> if we can use the IBM tone analyzer even though that's shitty but I always when I post messages on LinkedIn I always use this tool and uh, what it does and let me just quickly oh yeah I guess we can use the yeah tweets for example uh, mm -hmm. it it kind of tags emotions, but just disregard emotions and treat it as kind of like the types of messages, you know, analytical or you know, like confident, you know, mm -hmm. we can replace these with like um, kind of like guiding or like uh, something like that. Some <laughs> tags that represent mm -hmm. um, some like where this message is coming to. If it's just like, well, wow, the, amazing, the, the, that's congratulatory yeah. message, you know. Yeah, yeah, but because, the point because, is not to use tone analyzer, but build your own like tone analyzer. But and not like, need, like tone. First label and it's it's like the the purpose or like the the reason why that message exists and what you want to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah. label your own de your own inputs, right? So we want to like, hey, how would you mm -hmm. label your own inputs? And we 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 just need to give some labels yeah. because th this is what actually happened on our last call when Slava just came in and he just, for whatever random reason, he just thought of this uh, tool that he learned some time ago. And he said, yeah, this is like view, what was their name? You're fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fine. And it was like, wait a second. So we spent like two months discussing this and it's, it already exists, right? So how do you weigh this kind of input? Okay, so this is what I, what I want to, and yeah. then, and then Slava also uh, uh, shared this. Uh, what was the open management? And it was like, wait a second. So that's exactly what we tried to ideate and practice. So this this whole thing. Yeah. In, uh, the same way so, as for the past three months. You know, I've been kind of like talking about all these principles and things, and people would say, yeah, this is like holacracy and Zappos, and I would read about it, and I'm like, yeah, this sounds similar. Or Tyler mm -hmm. would bring up Ricardo Semler from Brazil or whatever. And I would like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is awesome. Or someone else would bring up Valve and we would like, oh yeah, this is interesting. And the thing is, again, this is the, the same thing of discovering things you don't know exist. And I think mm -hmm. that should be a tag, kind of like bringing something that other people may not know about. And, all, and it also changed the direction of the conversation. Okay, after like two months, you just share this link and like, wait, and just like everything now goes into a totally different direction, like it was with Valve. Well, not or... totally, but it's definitely supportive. Yeah, but the direction has changed. So now we don't have to uh, invent uh, the wheel, okay? Now we can just well, we'll, use We'll definitely this... need to invent some, you know, steering wheels for, for <laughs> No, this. of course. But, course, I but it's just one message. It's just one message, right? So I want this message to to have this weight assigned to to to. Uh, and this yes, is, we need uh, just this is related label to, or to to what you would put in a summary. If you say, for example, summarize uh, this person's contribution to the project in uh, in one paragraph on, or in three paragraphs, what what you decide to put in there is pretty much based on importance. Or on your resume, okay? So, because yeah. this is where you boast, okay? So let Tyler boast about his contribution and label those contributions. And I think we need to come up with more labels, like some steering inputs uh, or just the support or um, so like that- Congratulatory or like, you know, some, some basic and, uh, encouragement right yeah, yeah, because it's also important that you encourage other people not not to fade out uh, of the development and they came back and did something valuable just because yeah. you were i'm pretty uh, sure that like 10 percent of my messages on slack are just like this is amazing amazing this is great <laughs> <laughs> and it and yes it works because yeah and and it changes people's actions as a result and then and then every everybody benefits and it was just yeah just this short amazing okay so so yeah let's label those contributions okay and, well uh, that sounds super actionable so let's uh um uh, max do, do you want to to send that message in the journal team because i think tyler is in, in the channel right he's not 
I, he is, I think, uh, in the Golden Journal, just to explain to him what we want to accomplish um, and, and explain yeah. to him. Uh, be, because you created the timeline so just give him that timeline and explain that hey i put all the messages together and we would like for you to kind of um actually you can uh, let me <clears throat> do this real quick i'm gonna take uh the timeline i'm gonna uh, duplicate it and i'm gonna create a filter for just tyler actions and that way he mm -hmm, can just go mm -hmm. through it and uh label those and I still think that uh, mm -hmm. it should yeah. be done for other people as well, not only yeah. each one doing it for himself. I'll so, do mine. Okay. Th Tyler is a, can, can do it for his own uh, to have a... For, for his resume, set. okay? And for this is resume. the perfect case, yes, because then he, he, he wants to exaggerate and exaggerate and he wants to boast mm -hmm. about it. So that's the perfect uh, case when people want to claim the reward, okay, claim their contribution. But, but in the end, you will have to be able to to claim for others as well, because, for example, steering it inputs can be easier identified by other by others. Uh, I think. I agree. I agree. Like, yeah, yeah. That's where pra praise the praise system comes into play. But it's a it's a next step. Let's uh, start mm -hmm. with uh, with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm gonna rename this timeline into Slack timeline because it mm -hmm. only has uh, you know, Slack messages. And in reality, Tyler contributed way more on the calls. And uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. that's something to, to figure out after this exercise. But again, I think we never assume that, like let's say Slack, specific Slack channel is like exhaustive. Yeah, yeah. it's just that, you know, the, you know the, the, if I filter by Slack timeline, uh, Tyler has maybe like 30 messages or so. And mm -hmm. it looks shallow in in reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. but I mean, but this is actually great because it's kind of again amplifies this. Like, oh, wait a second, the contribution is one thing. Here is the Slack projection is another thing. It mm -hmm. makes much easier to label the yeah. messages mm -hmm. versus like thousand go through thousand, etc. Because yeah. I think like if you look at my contribution to Git my Slack channel, would be actually I don't know like maybe three messages or something. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, right. And, I'm curious. And maybe, and maybe three messages. Like calls, you got it. <laughs> three messages, and then I was yeah. I participate maybe like in two calls. But I probably, in terms of contribution to get my workshop material, I contributed more in terms of me and Yas on actually running experiments, you know, of of applying that on management. Theory, yeah, right. Uh, and I mean, Just, your, your presence on the calls also helped to shape some things. I remember clearly. No, no, I understand, but I mean like, uh, that's the whole thing. Like what I like about why we're like considering Gitma as this example of how we build this, because it's no way the Gitma channel encapsulates actually yeah. all oh, no, the no, 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 no. result yeah. in this, right? So we will actually see where our proposed solution will fall flat. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, again, we will see, I would I yeah. really want to see exactly that. <laughs> You know, yeah, and because and, otherwise, and we, like it's kind of clear, like, yeah, let's just collect this, let's do labels, blah blah blah. We, I'm already thinking about like making everything on like I, you know, IBM has all of the bits and pieces to make good system, but yeah, and, it and let's just and, and, and let's just <laughs> say the and let's just say voice voice uh recordings would, would be the ultimate uh, like treasure trove of probably, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Sounds actionable. Let's, uh, you know, let's make some things happen. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. okay. This is as actionable as it ever was for this initiative. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Sounds All right. good. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.